Welcome, all of you. Um, a little update on some work that we did um, around PDF export uh, and improving that. Um, so there is, uh, there is uh, actually customer work here, um, funded by uh, Blackboard and um, BRZ. Um, and it's a number of nice things just incidentally, coincidentally coming together. So I thought I'd um, go and talk about that. Um, quick recap of the history there. Um, initial work was from Sun, I think around 2003. Um, implemented an open office 1.1. Um, that was already fairly complete. Um, and at that time, a really unique feature um, with stuff like um, hyperlinks, not only external hyperlinks, but also links cross, um, cross reference inside the documents uh, itself working, some initial form support um, and other stuff, and was um, supporting up to version PDF 1.5. Um, and some niceties like uh, shrinking images um, when you knew it was uh, like uh, a massive, massive JPEG that you were embedding and scaling small on the writer page, you could reduce that while exporting. Um, that was funded by Sun and there was some um, community work during open office times, um, most notably from um, uh, Backpack, Giuseppe Castagno. Um, most of that landed in 2.4. Uh, that was the initial um, implementation of PDF-A, which is the archival standard for PDF that you are required to use under uh, multiple jurisdictions if you want to properly archive documents and have it, like when you get an audit, have it recognized as the proper document. And it um, cuts down in a number of features, usually with the intention just to make sure that 20 years down the road, when you don't have the fonts available, if you don't have the original system you were doing that available any, anymore, you can still faithfully render the document. And tons of fixes there. Really, um, I was looking at that um, at that time. At the, there was some two or three uh, feature branches, or CWSs, as it was called back in the day, um, quite some work now. Uh, and I don't know if whether that was purely volunteer or whether that was whether, whether there was some funding from the Italian government or from somebody else. Maybe people from the audience might might know that. Um, then comes LibreOffice work um, with some great stuff there around PDF signing, which is really useful uh, for an electronic workflow that you, um, when you export your document, you write a document, um, in LibreOffice, uh, you certainly do not want then an extra signing step with, an, with a separate application, but you want it straight there, um, sign it right as it comes out of Writer, so you can be sure that uh, there's no interference with the document and it's also much nicer and much, much more usable. That was um, implemented by Gökçen Araslan as a GSOC project. It was uh, um, an experimental feature for, for a few years. <laughs> And then Tor um, finished that up, got it into a non-experimental state for LibreOffice 4.4, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there was a number of fixes, mostly I think from from Miklos, but perhaps also Tor was fixing there um, between 4.0 and 5.4. Um, that was around the um, this PDF -ium, like um, being able to to stick PDFs inside the PDFs. Um, and also with timestamps like this, this whole signing thing, and then getting uh, hash support up to par with uh, SHA-256, like elsewhere. Um, yeah, and then there was, uh, from at least from looking at the, at the commit history, then there was again a bit of a hiatus and nothing much happening, and then uh, came around um, a customer. So the, actually, um, the trigger for the uh, PDFA uh, update was that there was a customer uh, who, was, uh, who wanted to export uh, a, a longer writer document and needed the PDFA option. 
uh, and unfortunately that writer document had a transparent image um, uh, strategically placed in a frame so that suddenly the entire writer page would have been rendered as a bitmap and that was really blowing up the document and also reducing the quality. Um, and the only way to fix that really was to bump uh, PDFA support to version 2, which includes transparency. Um, so, and that was kind of triggering uh, that part. Um, and then there was another customer who um, really needed uh, better accessibility support um, because it was a requirement from their customers that whatever they're producing needed to be, to be accessible by law. Um, so for, for, for enabling that, we needed, um, that was already working, mostly working in writer, just Impress was a bit of a mess. <clears throat> Right, so there's a meter bug that I have um, linked for you. The slides will be uh, up on the conference page. Um, at least I will mail them out tonight, and then whenever um, that, that page comes up, it will be linked from there. Um, that has something like, I don't know, 100-ish 100, 100 uh, bugs linked from it, um, but it's not really all of that, I would think, is is really the, the, the actual export. There's also lots of like things that are not as nice as they could be, or um, upper layers in the application are not supporting uh, a feature properly um, that that PDF could use, but doesn't yet. Um, right. So um, yeah, PDF A2 has a number of other upsides. Right now, the only thing that LibreOffice makes use of is it enables transparencies or stops disabling that and emulating that by putting it all in one large bitmap. Um, in theory, we could also support JPEG 2000 image compression, which just gets JPEGs really much smaller. Um, layers, better open type fonts. Oh yeah, and pretty, probably pretty interesting, but it's not implemented, um, um, so that probably needs a bit of uh, review and validation and work, which I didn't get to um, pay this. So you can use the newer uh, encryption and signature uh, features with the, with the A2. Okay, so um, how is that um, accessibility done in PDF? This is just largely about tagging. So you have your, your graphical content and then you have a, a different stream in the PDF that says, oh, this object there with a the bounding box over here that is an image or um, there's a paragraph and that is on indent uh, enumeration level such and such or um, further annotation or for text you usually get a, get a UTF-8 like a Unicode character stream that is um, not in, in random graphical order but that's in reading order so you can actually extract easily extract the text and put it give it to a screen reader um, and it, this also has positions there, so you can, when, when the user says, oh, I can't quite figure out what this is, so pointing there, and then you get some, some text or get it uh, to the clipboard. That stuff, that, that's handled via tagging. Um, that's the, um, that's the, the original um, PDF ISO standard, the 2008 uh, version, section 4.9, that has the, um, I think it's, it's a typo, it should be 4.8, I think. <laughs> Um, that has the, uh, all the details there. And as I said, it was available in Writer, so the, 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 the engine or the underlying technology also in the, in the VCL layer to, to write that out, it was already there. Just the information from the application um, that was only implemented for, for Writer. And in, and in Impress, it was just not being passed down that this very paragraph that you have here uh, is an enumeration or that this image here is a foreground image and not some, some master page background. Um, yeah. So that work is sponsored by, um, by Blackboard. Board. Um, thanks for that. Wouldn't have been possible without. Um, there's a very old bug there. Um, uh, 34135, where, where for Impress, um, that the, the problem is that, um, that images do not get any description. So you can set the, the description on an image um, in, the, in the UI, it just doesn't get exported. So that's, it's, uh, it's useful for, for the screen reader in LibreOffice. 
on your desktop, but it's just not being passed down to PDF. That was also working for Writer, just not for Impress. Um, same story, um, which is not in this bug, but um, that um, you can label, you can say, well, this is a foreground image, so this is obviously interesting uh, to, to a user with, uh, with uh, uh, impaired vision. Uh, so you, you put, um, like the screen viewer kind of highlights that this is an object in the foreground, which is this figure tag. And then there's background stuff that's usually not important, like a background image or some decorative uh, content that gets the artifact tag. And it's usually not, that's kind of not really accessible um, for, for an, on a screen reader. And the second point, there was no uh, upstream bug for that, just um, still was broken and missing that there was no bullet list and enumeration tagging. So the only thing you were getting in the screen reader was a random list of paragraphs and with no relation to each other, with no hierarchy, with no, uh, this, is, this is the third, the fourth, the, the fifth line in an enumeration. Um, and this is now also fixed, so that you get this um, this L, which is it's very. So when you look in the PDF the, uh, unpacked stream, it's very self-describing. So you have this L for list, then you have this L I for list item, and then you have the L B L for list label, and it has the one or the bullet character or some icon, and you have the the list body, which is actually the text behind that, and a, a proper screen reader. Um, with PDF support, nicely displays that. And same story, um, yeah, for like this works exactly the same both for bullets and uh, enumerated lists. Um, there was a feature branch for that with some um, plumbing done by Armin and the drawing layer because that was actually the place where the, the impress and also the draw. Uh, text gets prepared and then passed down into a meter file with some extra uh, metadata that then the PDF export in VCL unpacks again and writes out. It's a little bit involved, um, but once we, we, got, uh, we got that place and got it fixed and, and the, the, uh, the data properly um, handed down, it was, well, <laughs> it, was, it was still quite some, uh, some effort to get it working for all cases, but you know, once that uh, initial understanding was there, it wasn't that hard anymore. And on top of that, uh, four commits fixing up after the fact. So, um, second part is um, fixing validation issues. That was um, the other customer with the PDFA. So for, for that, I really wanted to make sure that what we're producing there is valid PDF. So after I, I updated or cranked the, or incremented the PDFA version number. Uh, I thought, well, let's just run it through some validator. There's Vera PDF, which is um, open source, European Union funded validator written in Java, um, which is fairly complete with uh, the stuff that it's checking. Even goes, in, in part, it goes beyond the standard uh, or interprets the standard in a certain way. So, but it's very nice to have, and it's kind of the, the fallback or the, 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 the standard um, when you, um, but what everybody can, can, can possibly agree on as a validator. Um, and that did find a number of um, problems when I was running that over the uh, crash testing document corpus, like just exporting all of those with the PDFA2 setting, exporting all of that. Uh, to PDF and then running Vera PDF um, on top of that and it actually triggered uh, or I found a bug in Vera PDF. Um, so it was giving me this fail 618-1 uh, validation error and I was checking the PDF and it looked pretty okay to me. Uh, and then it, um, after some head scratching and debugging, I uh, figured out that it was just a bug uh, in, or an unfortunate way in Java, not being able to properly parse UTF-8 strings out of a byte buffer. So we could ignore that. I have a kind of hack fix there on disk. Um, it's not, well, like in theory, at least I could file a bug with uh, Vera, um, but it's not like in a state that I would be happy to um, give them that patch. It fixes the validation issue, but it's not very, uh, very generic. Uh, it also found some real issues. Um, 
So um, most important that, that was causing the most work then in, in the code was that um, there was a number of fonts used that were not embedded, which is a requirement obviously for PDFA. And it was all, almost all of that was triggered by, by form export. Um, form export is a bit of a special case, um, but the default setting in LibreOffice for PDFA has that enabled. Um, and it's actually permitted, at least to a limited extent, in PDFA. So it's not something that we could ignore, uh, because unsuspecting users would just have a document with forms and then bonk on the button and get a PDFA that would actually be not, not valid. So that was um, yeah, just a bit of legwork there to fix that and make sure that even for, for checkboxes, which had this, this nice check mark, uh, as a glyph used, and using the the the, the sub uh, dingbats font for that, and there was just no uh, nothing there in the export that was embedding that font because it was one of the 12 standard fonts. And then, of course, if you don't do PDFA, you don't need to embed that. And it's also quite quite a bit of overkill to embed a font just for this this bloody uh, one single glyph there. Um, and the same story for the radio button. Um, there was also the, the circle for the um, for that. No, no, it was the, 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 the it was actually the bullet. It was a bullet character used for the for this little um, um, enabled button thing. Um, and, and so I just um, um, I could remove that. There was no need to embed any font um, because there was um, the standard functionality available and. Um, uh, um, in, in, the, in the PDF form uh, implementation, just for the checkbox, I had to um, go to the effort and use open symbol there and just embed that that glyph when that when that case arises. Uh, and some problems with the uh, with the font subsetter kind of um, that's really quite interesting code there um, with uh, quite a number of to dos um, and I just solved one problem there that there was some there was a problem with parsing order like you were writing something out and then the information that actually you could put at that place you would only be getting later while you were writing um, other stuff so it was just going back to that place putting in the um, the glyph bit there so it was coherent <coughs> with the rest of the subsetted font um, and the uh, yeah some color space uh, and some annotation uh, dictionary that was also like that was comparatively easy just changing the order of how things were written um, and some um, yeah like really detailed like and I don't really know if that was Vera PDF being being extra extra. Uh, Annoying, or whether that's really—I um, that, that, think that's a question of in interpreting the, the the standard there, so that you, you don't you only reference stuff and you don't like put it in the at the object, but you just put a reference to another object. And anyway, but that's all fixed. Um, so there was also a bug about PDFA value. So most of that also applies to PDFA. Um, so that was, you have been writing invalid um, PDFA since 2007 or 8. Um, so that also fixes that bug. Gets rid of a bit of dead code, gets rid of a workaround for some old OpenOffice bug. Um, yeah, so in the end, um, the uh, PDFA support was rather trivial. So that was pretty much just um, incrementing a number in the uh, document metadata with a bit of extra information, but it was just boilerplate. So, um, and, but that was like, I did that, of course I did that, that was the first thing I did, and I thought, well, that was an easy fix, and then I discovered all the validation errors, which were the actual work um, for that. And of course, that um, now there's the, like um, there's lots of if statements in the uh, exporter that check can I use this feature or can I not. And for transparency in this particular case, uh, for PDF A2, um, I enable that, so now it gets uh, used. So um, the transparent bitmap gets exported and not the emulation gets triggered, um, and the customer was happy. 
Um, yeah, as I said, there's this meter bug with uh, a real uh, load of extra issues. If you sort for severity, and then there's a um, memory usage problem, which might be something that QA could have a look at, whether perhaps that's actually this transparency emulation. And with PDFA 2, that would go away. Um, yeah, and some crashes and quite the number of features that are missing, things that we could do better. Uh, the most interesting probably um, as a feature is PDFA3 support, uh, which has um, among others, so the really, I mean, beyond this like checking the box, hey, we can do a PDFA3, which is just incrementing the bloody number and you're not getting anything extra except for uh, that. Uh, there's one thing that's interesting there, uh, which is you can, there's now a way to do this hybrid PDF, like this embedding the source document um, in PDF um, as a proper, like, st standard uh, mandated way, uh, which um, would actually fix another validation error, because if you use hybrid PDF, uh, it becomes immediately invalid. Um, so, and when you do, this is this, there's some source tag or something now that you can use, and that would then um, uh, also, for example, in Ocular, show that there's an, uh, there's an attachment, and that's the, the actual source uh, for the document. So that, that's an obvious, um, obvious improvement that we can now relatively easily do. Um, and getting rid of this kind of hack from, from the early days um, with the hybrid, um, which was just, there, there was nothing there. Like they, Philip just came up with that, hacked it in, and then later people realized um, uh, on the on the PDF committee that it's actually useful, and then they standardized it, but differently. Differently. Um, another thing we could consider, uh, given that we are doing that in, uh, in other places, that we do run uh, validators on everything that um, LibreOffice exports, we could possibly do the same uh, for PDF. <coughs> As I suspect, the uh, embarrassment of writing uh, invalid PDF is about the same as writing invalid ODF. Um, and with Vera PDF, there's a, uh, an open source tool there. We already uh, have a Java dependency for the ODF validator, so that wouldn't really add uh, any, any, any extra. It just would slow things down, obviously. Um, for, for any unit test or for the crash testing. But that could be something that could be run on a, on a dedicated host once a week, like the crash testing, just to see that, that we're not getting, not, not accidentally triggering some regressions there. All righty, so um, that was all I had to tell you. So we have some minutes for questions, I guess, like, Five or six. So I'm sure you have lots of questions. Don't hold back. <laughs> okay. No questions? Thanks anyway. Oh. Yeah. A question originating from the French Forum. I recall a guy asking for uh, asking a question regarding the export of a presentation to PDF format, and he was wondering if there was any kind of documentation uh, detailing if any transitions are going uh, through the export. Uh, yes, there is. I don't. So I'm not sure that still works, but there's, in any case, there is a, a subset of slide transitions that are in PDF and that at some stage were used. So when you, when you use the right slide transition and then did an export to PDF from Impress, you will be getting that. If you use the wrong slide transition, either you got a fallback or no transition. But I'm not sure. I have, I'm just, we should probably test that. So, but you don't know where that, where that would be documented, apart from the specification of the. It should be part of LibreOffice uh, documentation or some spec somewhere. No. 
Uh, yes, so if it still works and it's not documented, it should be. <laughs> but you have no idea where. So that's probably a question to bring up with uh, Olivier. I, I'm not really up to date with that. Thank you. But I mean, there's, I mean, there's a number. I mean, there's this, there is um, so somebody who would be using PDF for presentation. Um, there is actually quite some nice things that you could do on top, um, which is also emulating, like this LaTeX Beamer, for example, does that emulating uh, um, enumerated list fly-in by just outputting more slides with a transition effect there. So for simple content and for like just one one effect per uh, per slide, that could be done. It will be a bit of a hack, but that's just, I mean, that's the same like, like LaTeX Beema does it. And with that, you would get, um, for simple presentations, you would get almost perfect um, output there. Uh, just a question. You, if I noticed that you talk about the uh, accessibility of PDF. Uh, is your customer asking uh, other uh, modification for accessibility? Um, could you rephrase? I didn't quite get the for <laughs> possibility for. Uh, did they ask you to change uh, other things that, uh, than PDF, for example, uh, the product, or uh, to make it more accessible? For PDF, you mean if there's any pending bugs for PDF accessibility? Uh, no, for, for accessibility in terms, not uh, only PDF. Did they ask you to do things on accessibility, other than PDF? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further questions, three, two, one. Thanks so much. Keep enjoying the conference. <laughs>